Hey guys, how's it going? This is my sixth Zoom today. <laughs> I had multiple, multiple hour Zooms. So yeah, yeah, I'm like, I don't think that happy hour will be happening after this week. <laughs> I feel like my head is about to like explode. <laughs> Last night, so mm. all right. Um, all right, so tonight or today, we're gonna talk about I don't even know. No, we're talking about badging. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I feel like I shouldn't know at this point. Um, all right, so badging is um, the idea of like giving some extrinsic reward. Um, for, for student mastery, that's not like grade related necessarily. Like if you have mastery, everyone gets the same badge. Um, but it's just a way you can kind of jazz up your Canvas classroom. It's an automated process once you set it up. Um, and it's tied to modules. So does anyone have any questions before I get started? Just feel free to talk out. You don't have to put it in the chat. You can just talk. This is pretty informal. <laughs> I have a quick question. Can we um, set this up as an app in our sandbox so that we can play with it? Or should we just wait until we have students? You can totally set it up in your sandbox and play with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? So first of all, I have a wakelet, of course, for us. Um, and it leads you through all the steps that I'm gonna go over today. Oh, wow, that didn't copy everything. There you go. Um, so you can use this to follow along today or um, you can use that as a reference later. So Badger is the tool that you can set up your badging with. Um, and let me kind of lead you through that. So really step one is your ITC should install it um, at the domain level. That way it's done for all the teachers. You can certainly do it at your level, but it's really bad, like just within your course, but then you'd have to do it for each of your courses. So it's really just better for your ITC. Um, send them step one in this wakelet and have them do that and have that it get installed and then it's pretty straightforward. All right, next thing is doing the stuff here in Badger before we get to Canvas. So you're gonna sign in. I recommend signing in with your uh, Microsoft, your same account that your Canvas is used with. So you'll see there's a Microsoft back, uh, login. We're gonna do that. So now you've created your account. That was easy step two. Step three is you're going to create an issuer. You are the issuer. So you're the one issuing the badges. So in the top corner, you're going to say create issuer. Um, put your, your name. You can put a, like a image if you want. Like if you have a class image, you could add that. Uh, you can add, um, if you have a website, you could add that. Um, or you can just put your school's website, which is what I did. Um, you can put your email as your contact email and a description of, of who you are. <laughs> so that's pretty simple and then you'll just check the box and you'll say create issuer. So again, you're just creating the person who's going to be uh, giving the badges. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a person, I guess. I guess you can do this at a school level or you could do it at a whole grade level together um, so, so that you could technically do that. Any questions about creating an issuer? Now that you've created the issuer, the fun part is to make the badges. So this is where you got to start thinking about how your class is set up um, and how you want to um, issue those badges. So I recommend issuing the badges and the, the way that it works within Canvas is to issue them by module. So you need to think about how you're setting up your modules and that will determine the type of badges you make. So in high school level, I think about units or standards. And so I would make a badge for each standard. Um, if you're in a like a CTE, you might think about skills or um, competencies, I think is what they're also called. So just think about before you start making badges, thinking about the way you're going to lay out your Canvas classroom and think about the badges that would uh, align to that. Then you got to design them, which is the fun part. So I recommend two websites and they're in the wakelet. Uh, badge builder, which here is really easy to use. So you just see, you can pick the badge shape you like. 
kind of loop. Let's not use two at once. It's kind of weird. All right, so I have a bad shape. I can change my colors here. Um, and then I can add images to them and I can add text. I like to get images from the noun project. Um, let's see, someone just popped in. I was trying to get in. Uh, yeah, I like to get images from noun project. If you've never heard of that website, um, it's $20 for a whole year. And if you teach like littles, this is especially good or L or SPED, all of these noun, um, it's just images for nouns and they're very simple. Um, they make great flashcards. So you can use th these images for lots of other things, but it's basically a 2 million images for 20 bucks a year. So that's really great. Um, so maybe if you're wanting to do a badge about a skill, let's just look at skill. Or you can hear my golden retriever is at uh, home. He's panting loudly. <laughs> All right, so like, here's just some images that could go on a badge. So I could download this image and let's see, I can change the color of it here. So you can really uh, get personalized. Then I can download it. Then I can go back to badge designer and I could upload it. And now that image is on my badge and it somehow connects to the content or the skill that I'm having my students do. Um, all right, so that's designing badges. Once you've designed this, and this is an ugly badge, but um, you just download it as a PNG. You put your email in. Um, they don't email you. Never got an email from them. And then you just download. So that's how you would design some badges. That's one way. If you're a Canva lover, which I am as well, Canva is another great place to design badges. Any questions about designing badges? All right, so once you've designed your badge, the artsy part, you're going to go back to Badger. You're going to go into your issuer. And you're going to create your badges. So here I create my badges. You can see I've created some badges. I can also view like how many people have been awarded those badges um, from here. I can view that here. I can also view that in the Canvas classroom. So I've designed my badge. Now I'm going to create it. I create click create. I drag in that image I made. I give the badge a name. I give it a short description. And then for the criteria, I always just put the course URL. So like I go over to Canvas, let's see, and I would just put, if I was going to do it in this course, I would just put this URL of this course. But you can see that really there's no little asterisk here. So unlike the top part, the little red asterisk, that means you have to fill it in. You don't actually have to fill this in with anything. You can, but you don't have to. And then the alignment, you can add um, standards and um, tags to it as well if you want. So then you just create your badge and that cl click create and it makes it. The next steps are all gonna happen in Canvas. Uh, any questions about creating the badge in Badger? I'm going to, let's see. Let me get over to Canvas. I'm gonna try this in a sandbox, which I haven't used yet to show you. Uh, there we go. All right, on the left side of your navigation, after your ITC has installed the Badger, you're gonna see a link that says Badges. So you'll click on that link And your first step once you get in here is to create the class or set up the class. So it's loading, it's detecting if you have any modules in your class. So it's saying, all right, you wanna select yourself as the issuer. If it was your first time using it, you would probably have to log in on this page, but I've been in before. All right, now it's detecting if I have any modules in this class and I don't. So it says there are no modules for this course. So what I need to do is, again, create those modules. So that's why you got to think about your modules and how you set up your course first, then design the badging. So let me just make a module so it will show. I'm going to make a practice module one, add module, great. Now I can go back to badges.
and it's searching again to see if you have any modules. All right, and it's like, oh yeah, you have a module now. Now you can assign a badge to go with that module. So all of your badges that you created are listed. You just have to pick one that you created. And the evidence is completion of a module. So once the student finishes the module, then they're getting that badge. So that's all the setup you have to do there. Then you go back to module and you just add an external tool and you're gonna pick Badger. And that's it. Now, if you had, you know, your whole module built out with things that they had to do in order using those prerequisites and their requirements, once they get to this at the very end, then they get the badge. And that's it. Questions? Parts you want me to go over again? Katie. Katie. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, that last part where you just submit the badge evidence, is it they just go, they just click through that. It, we don't, they don't actually have to submit anything, correct? Yeah, so it, you'll see that they just click through that because they're not going to get there if you set up all the requirements in the module until they've, they've completed everything else in the module. So you'll see they just got here and that's, that's it. Evidence required for completion, there isn't any. So they're just gonna get this badge. So if you're not familiar with, with setting up those requirements and those uh, prerequisites, you do that in a module. So you go to the header and you click the three dots and you say edit and all of your things would be listed here. So let me go to a, a module where I actually have a lot of stuff. because you can do this prerequisites and requirements with or without badging. You don't have to do badging to do the requirements. This is just a basic uh, Canvas feature that I think everyone should use <laughs> when we're remote learning. I think it empowers the student to do everything self-paced and those students that are SPED or L and need guidance as to where to go next, it does all of that for them. So in this module, if I go to edit, Edit, let's see. All right, so you'll see that I've added, um, some things in the module may just be pages for them to do. Some things are actual tasks. So I've added all of the tasks that they had to do. Um, if it's a page, you can just say that they have to view item. So they just have to view that page to get past it. Um, other tasks, you can choose if they have to submit it, if they have to score at least. So that can be mastery based that they move through the module. Um, and, uh, ooh, ooh. Cancel. I'll cancel that. Um, or they can mark it as done or just view the item. I want them to submit before they can move forward. I want them to actually do that assignment before they can go forward in the module. So if you set all that up, then they're not going to get to that, that getting the badge until the very end. That won't even be open for them. Do you have to set uh, the prerequisites in order for them to get a badge? You would have to set the requirements in order for them to get a badge or else they'll just click on the badge at the very end and then they get it they get to that before <laughs> they get to anything else i'm just trying to think through elementary we would have them clicking differently through the module so maybe they mm -hmm. wouldn't even know that it was there until they got there okay yeah just wondering. <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay it's more for like a sequential um you know type thing okay or it, you can always just have it related to like if I made my um, my prerequisites or my requirements just like one quiz at the end, then they're not going to get pat They could do everything else above in a different order and just have that one quiz at the end that's going to get them the badge. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, or one activity at the end that right. you know is going to get them the badge. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Katie, are all their badges housed in one central location, or is it just? through the modules, I mean, yeah, on so their own the, the, When they go to the badges, they see the badges they've earned. So when they go to this badges link, they'll see whatever they've earned in that class. You see a teacher view and they see their view with all their little badges lined up. Um, another thing that you can show and, and another feature you can enable, is, and this is the way to kind of gamify the classroom if you want to, 
is to enable the leaderboard. So um, when you enable the leaderboard, kids can see where they are related to other people and you enable name sharing, then they'll see their name. But otherwise, they just gonna, everyone else will just see the alias and they'll know their own alias, but they won't know their classmates alias. So right now I've said name share and so everyone would see the names, but this means they'll just see their alias so they can kind of just see, oh, where Inspired Firefly, which is me, is compared to everyone else. You also have a progress board just of your own as the teacher where you can see um, who's gotten what badges from your whole class list. So I can see, oh, like, oh, well, these people have done some work. These were all extra things over the summer and some people have not. Any other questions? I have a question, Katie. Do the badges, so the badges just stay within that one class? So if a student, there's not like a central place they would see all the badges from like forever? For all of their, like from all of their people. From, well, I guess maybe they would have a, I think they're just gonna see it by class. I don't know that it, how, how it will look, if they'll see all of their, their classes in one place or not. Um, but you can also enable badge sharing. They can share their awards they got on Twitter or you know, social media. Mm -hmm. They can then take them out and share them in a way. Yeah. All right, they, yeah. Any, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I wanna, I, as being the only person in my school who's done them yet, I think with people and people being teachers, I don't know how it will look between courses. Yeah, it's a good question. Any other questions? So I have like just a specific question just for my, the one module that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. So the module that and maybe I set it up incorrectly, but the way I have the module in my in my sandbox or in my course. Um, and then when I go to click to add the requirements for them to do it, it's not the exact same order that I have the module listed on the page. Oh, because that's what you added each thing in a different order then. Okay, so yeah, but so you would have to click the X's. You can't reorder them. You have to X out and then add things. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. it's, it's not the way that it's listed. It's the way that I added them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Good to know. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, Dan, I see you're here. Are you lurking? I am. <laughs> Do you have any additional words of wisdom about prerequisites or requirements and modules? Um, I'm, uh, other than being a big fan, um, no, sorry, I was answering three different other things at the moment. Was there a specific, this is the beauty of lurking is that I don't have to listen all the time. <laughs> I was, uh, I don't know if this fits what you were talking about. I was talking to some staff of mine today. Uh, the question came up of why wouldn't we have every module be a prerequisite for a following module just so that we can I also saw this term you say we should, <laughs> to, to match our kids, we should stop using terms like synchronous and asynchronous because they can't spell mm -hmm. it. They don't know what it means. That we should start using live and on demand. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> those are Netflix terms. <laughs> they know what that means. Or Hulu, or Hulu terms. Um, but then I was talking with them about how, you know, you, you and I have talked about this a lot in our group of, of we want to set up courses so kids can binge watch our course. But also, I think it's important to have some modules that aren't, that are kind of like free floating modules mm -hmm. that don't have any kind of prerequisite to get into it. Uh, being a math teacher, and, you know, uh, I, I would have a module just of useful formulas, you know what I mean, uh, of things like that and examples of when to use them. And then I just add to that module all year long. Um, every content class at every grade level has vocabulary. And I think that's a module that you would want to have no uh, prerequisites on. But um, for the binge worthy, for the on demand learning, <laughs> um, I think the, the prerequisites and requirements are like, a, it's one of my favorite things that Canvas does. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a fave of mine. Yeah, so that's badging in a nutshell. Thanks for coming, Dan. It's always yeah, good to see I, you. I, I, I Dan and I talk a lot, but we don't always get to see each other. <laughs> Andy, I have one question. Um, yeah. And it just went out of my head. Hold on a second. Um, if we set them up in our sandbox, should you, we go ahead and- to, You have to set it up in your actual course. Okay, so not set it up yeah. all the way because it 
gonna not. Yeah, I would just start to think about it in my sandbox and design the badges and mm -hmm. set them up in Badger, but you won't do the actual connection until you get your real courses. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah. so it's kind of good to not have your hub courses yet because you're not gonna have to dive right in. It gives you a little time to mull over it, think about how you wanna do it. <laughs> I'm one of those people that my own sometimes jumping in works and sometimes you're like oh why did i do it that way i could have done it another way um i see miss murdoch did kids create their own aliases no those are just auto generated those alias names any other questions all right i'm going to stop recording